welcome to the NBA show with you, kind of. It's one of those weeks where content is just strange. So anyway, if you remember last week, we talked about, hey, would you like us to talk about anything else than ponies? And we're going to try that. It's proof of concept. If you don't like what you hear, you can just say, we want you guys to talk about ponies. Not this new Fandango iPhone 7 or whatnot, or even the new game that's coming out, which is Super Mario Brothers. No. And for this talk we're going to have, we have the Legend of Myth, the Hippogriff, Silver Quill. I am a Titan. I wish I know what that was. So anyway, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, like I said in the very beginning, this is just a proof of concept of what we're going to try and do. And I I won't say that this is a review. Would you say this is a review? I would say it's more just sort of a discussion, a commentary on at least one game. Mm. And that game is Halo, right? It's Halo-ish. It's by the guys who first made Halo, but then they did something else. And that something else was called Destiny. Ah, Destiny. Which, in which I am a titan. <laughs> ah, blah, 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 blah. All right. It's interesting that you say Destiny because honestly, I've heard a lot of mixed reactions, a mixed bag of emotions towards Destiny. Some people enjoy it. Some people say it's terrible. Some people say it's grindy. Well, we'll cover all of that in due course, eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I'm guessing today's topic is going to be about Destiny then because you and you've been playing it a lot from what I've heard. And personally for me, if you guys want to know what I've been playing, it's um, Magic the Gathering in the Commander format. And besides that, in gaming terms, I've been playing, uh, whatchamacallit, this Ultra Street Fighter 4 and Divinity Dragon's Commander. So there's that. But nobody wants to hear me talk, right? It's all about you, Silver. Oh, <laughs> and, isn't and it always? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, no. True, true. No, <laughs> true. no, no. But I do want to know about Destiny because, like I mentioned before, it's a mixed bag of reactions from the positive to the negatives. So as far as I know, you're... A man who, or hippogriff, who has not much time in his hands. So, why Destiny? Actually, it's it's a page right out of Amending Fences. I had a friend in high school, very good friend. We've managed to keep in touch, but things had, well, life gets in the way. He's he's a married father of two. Uh, I'm I'm doing my own work, and you know we just sort of drifted apart for a little bit. But recently, we just started trading texts back and forth. He found my YouTube channel and had <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> Let me guess. One of those questions is, why are you a bird? <laughs> Actually, that was probably the least of it. He was very impressed by what I had created, and I got to find out what was going on with him and his family. Ah. So hopefully that will lead to reunion dinners and just catching up in person. But we made a resolve to play – Destiny as a way of connecting because he really enjoys the game mm -hmm. and it's a good sort of game night deal. But I'm always uncomfortable if I'm like new to a game and I'm the dead weight. You know, you, mm -hmm. you do multiplayer, you don't want to be that guy who's getting all killed all the time but not contributing to the, uh, to the outcome. Well, I think you're in contributing, but <laughs> you're contributing to the other side. <laughs> That's right. You're 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 the be you're the other side's best friend, but you don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. So on evenings, I've been playing for an hour or so, just to run around, shoot a bunch of stuff, and experience both the world and the lack of a story in some some cases. Because because Destiny is it's a curious attempt. They promote Bungie promoted this to no end. They they wanted you to be thrilled that they had passed the reins of Halo to three four three Industries, and now they were ta they were tackling a combination of uh, first person shooting with some RPG elements, kind of like Borderlands. But yes, it did come under very heavy fire, and for a time it seemed like it, it was a it was pretty much a, a dud, until they released their expansion pack, The Taken King. Hmm. I, I, before you carry on, because I do remember that they say that. Um, with Destiny, they they had a few changes, and one of the most obvious changes was Peter Dinklage. I bought the Ultimate Expansion Super Duper Pack. Uh, 
it has everything that's been released to date. So in some ways, for $60, I got more bang for my buck than people who bought the game at the start, which is, again, not terribly fair. But one of the things is that they replaced Peter Dinklage as the main voice actor for the the ghost, your little computer companion throughout the whole adventure. If I'm not mistaken, is Nolan North, was it? It is Nolan North, and he is a very energetic voice. Not like hyper perky, but I've listened to some sound bites of Peter Dinklage providing the role, and he just sounded uninspired. That's what I understand. And for you guys at home who are wondering who Nolan North is, he's one of the few, well, he's one of many voice actors in the American voice actory, voice acting scenes. He does a lot for TVs and gaming. And if I'm not mistaken, he's the penguin for Batman Arkham. Well, the Arkham series, if I'm not mistaken. Well, anywho, this Peter Dinklage was just, for whatever reason, was not putting in a big emotional performance for the ghost. The ghost is basically just this floating eyeball with metal plates around it. And its goal is to hack doors and scan objects. That's 90% of its role, and to tell you where to go. So, as people have rightly criticized, many of the missions break down to set the ghost to working on this door and defend it from the advancing hordes, of which there are many. I suppose we should really start with uh, the story of Destiny, such as it is. If it's done by Bungie, I think I've played two games by them, and it's not Halo 1 and it's not Halo 2. (laughs) And uh, it's Oni for the PlayStation 2. It's a third-person uh, beat-em-up kind of game, which is pretty interesting because I thought that was done by a Japanese developer, but no, it was American, and I played it till finish, and I find it entertaining. And the second game was Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3. Uh, so, yeah, Halo in general. So those are the two games I played from Bungie. I love that you, you count Halos 1, 2, and 3 as just one game. Well... It's Halo, you know. It, there, there's no significant change besides graphics, gameplay design, and whatnot. You still move forward left and right and press a button to shoot. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. But, uh, Des- okay, the, the short skinny on in Destiny is that the first expedition to Mars, where we didn't leave Matt Damon behind, <laughs> uh, they discovered this giant white orb, called, which they called the Traveler. Mm-hmm. And this this titanic object returned to Earth and opened this golden age of technology and advancement. So basically to the point where we were colonizing other planets in our solar system, even Venus and Mercury, which scientifically speak, speaking strikes me as a very bad idea. Why? Mercury is so close to the sun that it is just so hyper, so hot, you basically be incinerated right away. And Mercury so cold? That's that's Mercury. Venus is so is basically a gas filled with poison gas. A lot of it's always kind of funny. There are so many science fiction stories where we're colonizing other planets, and you just ask why? Why are we expending the resources rather than trying to reach planets that mother that nature itself are out there? It might take a while, but we have to go beyond the solar system. True, true. But anyway, I, I'm getting off track here. So all everything seems hunky-dory until you realize that the Traveler had enemies, which he calls the Darkness, or Charlie Murphy. Ah, <laughs> oh, Charlie Murphy, you Darkness. And the Darkness comes in, and they're very, very vague about the climactic war that left the Traveler broken and injured, one city on Earth left unconsumed, and basically a whole lot of wicked alien races are coming in and messing with our stuff. So you are a guardian. You've been dead for thousands of years, but your ghost resurrects you. And you're surprisingly cool with this. Stunningly cool with this. Disturbingly cool with this. Eh, It's just Tuesday. It's Tuesday, and you're going to die throughout the game. And there's even a line in in one campaign, ghost get ready with a resurrection. Just just saying. (laughs) So it's like, wow. Jesus Christ is standing up to say, going, hey, guys, come on, be cool. <laughs> uh, uh, but basically, your role is to meet threats across multiple worlds and on Earth. 
uh, combating the forces of the darkness, which is somewhat abstract. I'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. But but basically, they tell you, go here, retrieve this item, kill this enemy, hack this door, and you go do it. So basically, you're from what you're telling me, is that this game is kind of a fetch quest kind of game. It's basically an MMORPG, almost like uh, Warcraft or Final Fantasy fourteen. It's very much in that vein. Uh, I'd compare it a lot to the missions in Borderlands. Mm, okay, but Borderlands is Although... fun because, well, I've played Borderlands 2. And from what I'm, from my experience of Borderlands 2 is that you get awesome weapons, weapon upgrades and whatnot, and those weapons are fun. And depending on your character, you can do certain things. Like, I like to play as the... Who now? The girl who is something i forgot what she does but she has really awesome psychic powers yay maya and uh lilith the sirens yeah 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 the sirens you played it i played both yay. borderlands one one two and the pre-sequel though that was kind of a letdown all right so yay so i played that and from my point of view the attraction to borderlands is just weapons 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 there's some of that in Destiny. The weapons are not as diverse in Destiny, but you do get that that uh, MMO charge of seeing your character's armor take shape, uh, gathering weapons and leveling them up, adding bits and pieces. My favorites are always adding scopes to the weapons, as I like to do some long-range shooting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Headshot, 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 headshot. Uh, and they, all the enemy heads just go poof. But unfortunately, whereas Borderlands had quirky characters that added a lot of fun dialogue or just drove you nuts, uh, Destiny at at launch suffered a severe loss uh, of characterization. Basically, you just walk up to these guys and there's this big towering blue guy who issues you orders. Hey, that's great. Who are you? There's a lady who's in charge of one of the other subclasses, the Warlocks. And she just sort of comments at you, but doesn't really, there's not a lot of interaction. For a long time, there were no characters. Now, in the most recent expansion, the Taken King, they are suddenly interacting, uh, developing personalities, having inner character conflicts. It's suddenly more of a story now that this big bad has entered the scene. So I guess I should expand on the Taken King, since that really is... It was a big step forward for this online game. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, before that, there's a whole debacle about how the DLC is going to work, right? Oh, there's always a debacle. Online gaming is a new frontier with a lot of issues and I think are right to get offended. Angry Joe and Jeremy Johns are very outspoken in uh, in their views on online content. Jeremy Johns refuses to play Destiny because you have to buy all this extra expansions just to get the game baseline good. (laughs) Now, like I say, I benefited. I waited and I bought the whole game with the content for less. For technically the game, the basic game at launch. Exactly. Same price. So I benefited. That does not, that I am aware of the unfairness, but at the same time, I am not victim to it. As these expansions come out, you have the option to buy them. And that just seems to drive people nuts because you buy a game. I'm from a generation where you bought a cartridge, you plugged it into your Super Nintendo, and you played. And that was that. Now, all of a sudden, you don't even have to make a good game. You can just promise a patch or DLC later. Sometimes it's even just disc locked. I understand you, man, because I come from a generation where I started in the nest, but I haven't been really active around that generation but i come from a point from the playstation era where okay i buy a game on disc i play it and why is this game buggy why is this like oh no god oh god why can't i jump right oh god the game's so buggy and i learn to live with it because they make a broken game so (laughs) that's it now i do agree with you that patches they want patch probably for certain reasons. But, hey, it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. The ideal is that you you have a game that increases value with time, that you 
add something new so you're never totally bored, your library is supposed to be renewable. That a, 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 an update, a DLC comes out, and suddenly you're dusting off a game you haven't played in months. Oh, true. It's similar to one of those things like um, story DLC, more levels, more content. But what do you do when suddenly the game as it comes out just really isn't worth your play? Is it worth your time? Then people don't want to pl- buy the game. Therefore, developers don't want to make DLC. Therefore, it just collapses under atrophy. Technically, a catch-22 of itself. But um, I, I think there's a good, a really good example for bad DLCs. Uh, okay, there's a few, but the first one that's really bad was uh, Oblivion, Horse Armor. Ugh, that's bad. DLC for just Horse Armor. It doesn't do much, but you have to pay real money just for Horse Armor. No. Um, the one I'm talking about is The Prince of Persia for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, that newer one, I think it was uh, 2009 or 2010 version. Oh, uh, yes, the, the one where the prince basically sabotages himself. Yeah, but anyway, um, that game, it was fun. I, I, I highly enjoyed playing that game. But the only problem was the ending. And they added this DLC content to get the good ending. But it wasn't good. I don't know. I haven't. I played the game, but I haven't got the DLC. I've watched the cinematics for that, and I can promise it's not... Uh... <laughs> it's not good, eh? No, no, it doesn't. It just leaves on another cliffhanger. Okay. Spoilers. But still, so, okay, that's example of a bad DLC. And from what you're telling me with Destiny, it sounds broken. It doesn't feel right. Like, remember when you, we say that, okay, games, when it's buggy, they patch it out? This seems like it's not doing that. It seems like, hey, this game is buggy it is a whole lot of bugs why don't you spend x amount of cash to fix it more like you've run every quest we have here are more quests mm, okay basically there were there were two expansions after the game's release you went through the first game and you basically just went around and you killed stuff and there was not really a sense that you had defeated a major force this is uh, i guess it's time to follow up on what i said about the darkness there are at least five races gunning for humanity. Well, humanity and perhaps some other friendly aliens and robotics. It's very confusing. These all fall under the purview of the darkness, and yet these same factions fight one another, which confuses me because if they're all in league with this dark force that's out there, why are they all fighting one another when they, when they could overwork on humanity? And, you know, you can come up with any number of headcanons, but basically, even in the game, they debate, is the darkness a real thing? Or is that just something we use to say, oh, here's this whole universe of people who want to kill us. Let's lump them all into a dangerous demigod. You know, maybe it's just a work of fiction. Hmm. All right. I I see your point. I I can see where people are saying that, what's the point? (laughs) Well, that's it, and it's it's an important question to ask. Now, the Destiny is not just sci-fi. There are there is a certain mysticism to it. I mean, okay, you've got magic so super power, uh, science so super powerful it looks like magic, but then there is also talk of you know primal forces, ancient gods. Uh, but then that leads me to question gods, <laughs> because that is a term we use very, very flippantly. In terms of video game, yes, there's many gods. Video games and fiction. Oh, true, 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 true. Especially if you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, there's three divine cards. No, four divine cards. So, yeah. And then three evil divine cards, and then three oh. demon cards, and then five dragons. Oh, wait, six dragons. Mm. It's all crazy. Yep. So, okay, so Destiny is a whole lot of confusing. So, we have been talking about a lot of bad here, like from the DLCs to the story so now okay the taken king taken king a something of a turning point because this is where it feels like bungie really knuckled down and got serious because the opening level of death of the taken king campaign is really wonderful on atmosphere on visuals on this growing sense of oh my gosh we're facing a real threat now a big threat and i don't want it to dismiss that there weren't story moments in the in the first the launch destiny 
more on that in a sec. How's this? There is a, a station is under attack and you are sent in to investigate and you see pockets of reality just being warped. You see enemies that you've been fighting on other worlds suddenly running for their lives, getting gunned down or sucked into these vortexes. You hear conversation from your commanders back on Earth, <laughs> lead from the rear. Uh, they're talking about this and one very adept but slightly unhinged individual is talking about voices whispering and fingerprints on her mind. Until you get to the head boss, where you're just greeted with this image of darkness uh, and fear. And what ensues is a pretty, it's still your average gunfight of run here, shoot this big thing before it shoots you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then get undercover. But there's this atmosphere to it that you think, yes, now we're up against a legitimate threat that ha you see the consequences if you lose. The Taken King refers to the fact that he takes other beings and corrupts them. So they become the Taken, ergo he is the Taken King. But his real name is Oryx. Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say Bob. <laughs> that would be funny. That Oh, shall, oh, oh fear the terrible Bob. Bob is coming to take over the world and corrupt our souls. You will all worship before the Bob. <laughs> I, I'm glad it didn't, all right? There are cinematics, which are important. It's so funny. I'm a guy who plays, even fighting games, I play with the idea of a story in mind. Mm, yes. So more Mortal Kombat than, uh, I don't know, vir Marvel. Virtual Fighter or whatever. Oh, all right. <laughs> Going real old school here. So to have this story, to have these characters really interacting is just great. Uh, that's what I really love uh, to play. So the Taken King kind of was taking the game that was starting to go, eh, I've, I've, I've had fun gathering and leveling up, but that can't sustain me. Oh, here's a story again. Here's a conflict. Here's characters contributing, even though I do all the legwork, Natch. And so I haven't completed the Taken King. I have actually uh, seen the cinematics before I bought the game. So, oh my God, spoilers. Mm -hmm. But it's fun. Part of the... Uh, the new settings is that the king resides on a dreadnought, this oh, wow. rectang this rectangular ship. And during the battle, he basically blasts a hole in Saturn's rings, which <sighs> kind of holy to begin with. Uh -uh. Okay, but still, wow. But you, but you just see this big empty zone in the middle of the ring where all the asteroids have been decimated. And there's his ship. And perspective tells you this thing is massive. Oh, wow. Like, just hearing the setup for... The Taken King, this Bob guy. I'm just going to call him Bob. Yes, let's call him Bob. Yeah, because hearing about Bob and how evil he is, it's just like, okay, yeah, he does a lot of bad things. But to know how really evil he is, he's riding in a dreadnought. Only really awesome guys like Kamina ride a dreadnought or really evil people like this guy. Exactly. You don't... There's no fluffy bunnies, not. Oh, we got Angel. We got Angel, but he doesn't have a ship yet. Yet, as we, as far as a we know. Angel would drive a mega dreadnought. <laughs> the most evil one. The most evil one. The only way you can get worse than a dreadnought is if it's a mega dreadnought or a doom dreadnought. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. But yeah, so from you telling me the whole situation with this, I am really at awe because this guy is just evil. He just shoots Mega Beam at Saturn's ring just to prove a point that he can. Well, also he was being attacked by a weaker force, but he just like, hell, I'm going to shoot my own ships. I don't care. <laughs> oh, wow. That's even more evil. Remember what I said about Chrysalis being evil? <laughs> oh, yes, but she throws her own subordinates into volcanoes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it, it's bringing some vitality, and th this is what downloadable content could be to expand, to grow, to add new stories, to keep the legend going. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, because if you look at The Witcher 3 and its story DLC, it's a 10-hour DLC. Nice. Now, there is some um, there's some humor in, the, in getting all this content at once. When I logged on and started playing, I encountered the Taken, which are basically just corrupt forms of enemies you've encountered. 
they were appearing when I was just starting. I was like, well, what are these things? What are, what's going on? Why are these things appearing? I know we're attacking me. Uh, it wasn't until I got to the Taken King. It's like, oh, that's where they come from. <laughs> so right. it kind of, it kind of spoiled for people who bought the initial release and then got the Taken King. This was entirely new. This was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? What are these things? This is, oh, for me, it was, oh, these are what's been going after me. Well, now it makes sense. Okay, I'm shooting you in the head. I'm shooting you in the head. 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 Hi, Bob. I'm shooting head. It's an improvement. People are, people are saying that the Taking King finally made Destiny fun. But the problem is it's been about a year since it came out. It took you a year to make Destiny the game it should have been at release. If I'm not mistaken, during the same time, another game came out. Uh, it was called Titanfall, right? Yeah, uh, I don't remember the timeline exactly, but Titanfall was equally anticipated, and as far as I know, it was kind of gone quietly into that dark night. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, because everybody was really hyped, because, yay, Titanfall, you can write big giant robots, it's exclusive for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One, was it? Yeah, I think so. No, I, Yeah, only for those two consoles, and yay, this is much awesome, but yeah, only for those two consoles, yay. For those two consoles, and it's kind of, uh, I haven't heard anything about Titanfall in a long time. Same here. So that's unfortunate. That's, you, you'd want it to have a little more panache. Unfortunately, I think the temptation with online gaming is that you think, oh, the community will carry the enthusiasm. We don't invest as much in story. But that's rare. Like, okay, uh, online gaming in terms of community gaming, because, okay, we got, League of Legends, we got Dota, we got Hearthstone, and we got other things. And I, I am guilty for one game called Payday Two. It's technically a heist game. You and your friends rob a bank, rob a jewelry store, rob something. How could you? Yeah, it's fun, and we do it in creative ways. Try to be sneaky, try to be loud, and survive. And it's fun. And we do it on a daily basis. If everybody's free, we do it. If not, hey, we don't do it. But it's fun. And if thing goes wrong, all right, everybody gear up for a loud mission. Let's go. So for me, it's kind of interesting in that sense. And the community somehow, or the developers for that game, really listen to what the gamers want. And hey, they say they want more masks. Okay, we give them more masks. They say they want more... Weapons? Okay, we've give them more free weapons. Oh, here's an introduction to a new character. Would you like to buy it? It's just a few bucks. Yeah. So, for me, when I look at Payday, it's a really interesting way of how they kind of work together for the players and developers. But I'm not saying that it's perfect. There's a few dramas about it, but we're not going to talk about Payday. It's all about Destiny now. I'm just saying my good example of it. Well, the question is the struggle. How much effort, how much story do you put into this stuff? Are people going to be content just to run and gun? Or do they want to know what's happening in the world around them? Mm -hmm. I'm in the latter category. So I consider the, uh, I consider the Taken King to be the best DLC for this. The question is, where do you go from here? Because I'm sure Destiny is going to want to release more future DLC. Well, you've set the bar kind of high now. You've got to do more. To uh, improve, to improve the standing. But here's the thing, like, okay, you said that you're a guy, f you're a guy who a highly enjoys story in their games. You've said that early on about even fighting game. So I'm guessing that you really highly enjoy Mortal Kombat Nine or Mortal Kombat X. So well, they're they're. I I am sorry for what they did to Liu Kang, but yes. Ah uh, yes, but yeah. At least the story is pretty interesting. So you're a person who likes story, and you're playing Destiny for the story. And I'm going to say that once you have done the story, you're not going to play and grind for better weapons and just that. I might for a little time just to just to see my character grow, to see this custom. What started as. Uh, <laughs> what was it? We were on a, a mission where you get to join in with other people online, mm -hmm. big group battle. And I found a guy, we were both the same level, and aside from some color differences, we had the exact same armor. <laughs> All right. I just thought, well, that's okay. 
I'm low level right now, so I guess the options are limited. But I I never want to have this again. It's like showing up to the party wearing the same costume. <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. <laughs> All right. So I I would like to level up and just have some an identity to my character. Mm, all right, all right. So that's going to be that. So I'm guessing, uh, well, you said you're going to play more of it. So that's the Taken King. It added more weapons, it added more stories. What else do they add? Well, some new locations like uh, like the Dreadnought and Mercury. New abilities, but mostly it's kind of funny. It took characters that hadn't really done anything and gave them personalities. Case in point, there is this living machine character voiced by Nathan Fillion of Firefly. Oh. And he is he just has these great one-liners <laughs> and a cinematic that really just shows his character. And you just think, okay, this is what makes it fun. This is I'd take orders from this guy. I'd I'd follow him into hell, I would. So in some ways it just takes what's already there and expands on it. Uh I can't say it's introduced new mechanics in terms of fighting. Some new abilities, but nothing like world breaking that you couldn't, you didn't already have. They haven't done anything to really shake up the dynamic and how you play in terms of new, uh, abilities or new options to play. It's still basically run here and shoot what's right in front of you. Well, if a formula works, why fix it, right? Exactly. If it ain't broke, but every now and again, people are going to want some, uh, Something to change it up, say, oh, wow, this is a whole new way to play. And I won't fault anyone for that. Like I said, I've played a lot of games, and Magic the Gathering is one of those situations where, okay, you can play this format, but I'm tired of this format because it's just too competitive. To to have extra fun, I play in the Commander format, which is just nuts, and I like it. In all honesty, I know. <laughs> I learned from my Dragon Ball Z Budokai, I cannot keep up with actual... Younger gamers. Oh, I'm an old yeah. man now. Yeah. I've got the risk of an 80 year old. <laughs> so I have not done the Destiny competitive play yet. Are there kinda... any? If not, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. They don't have anything like that. There's no PvP, right? Uh, there is. There's a, there's a stage called the Crucible where basically you just play off against other characters and I guess it's a free for all. Or perhaps you're divided into teams. But as I only have one friend who plays this, uh, and other, all my other friends are, you know, they don't play. So basically I'd be, I'd be playing against randoms and playing with randoms. And let's be honest, when you have that random element, it often falls short. Uh-huh. It's not fun when you're playing with rando. <laughs> exactly. And usually I like to use the term racist 10 year olds as I describe. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, little Billy. Mm-hmm. Now, now Billy, where did you learn to say that? From, from South Park. I knew it. <laughs> Uh, well, but still, okay, uh, Destiny, well, from what I'm hearing, you're having fun with Destiny, but not into the multiplayer side of it. But talking about multiplayers, you and your friend, so what have you two been doing? There are cooperative matches called strikes that are much more difficult. I mean, you tackle those alone, and you're pretty much just going to get overwhelmed by numbers. So we get together, he dies, I revive him, I die, he revives me. We we split, uh, basically, en- enemy hordes just come, and you're gunning. There's sound and fury, uh, but you manage to somehow sm- w- make it through. And it's uh, it can be fun. It can have be a little bit of an adrenaline rush. And mostly we're just joking about what we're fighting. It's like, I'd appreciate if you stop breathing right now. <laughs> uh, I'm at the Bob. <laughs> all right, all right. So it, it sounds like the most important part of this is as long as you two are having fun, Oh, yeah, as long as, well, isn't that true of any game? Yeah, true that, true that. We can even play bad or unsatisfying games if there's something, fu- if there's a fun element to it. Yeah. Well, I know what you mean because going back to Magic, because that's the only game I play right now, is my friend has a deck, and the purpose of this deck is to help, help. It's just to, okay, I give you life, I give you a card advantage, you can draw, like you can untap your mana during an opponent's turn. It's just basically, what is your goal? My goal is just to help. I'm not here to win, I'm just here to watch the chaos ensue. It's good to be helping. Yes, especially when it's for the benefit of others, and you just going there to be chaotic. <laughs> ah, yes. That's why I play Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Vic. Oh, you need... We, oh. 
we, you need to teach me how to play that game, man. Because I, uh, uh, there's something we can do later on, but yay. But that's a fun one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Destiny, you, you and your friend been playing it. And how many hours have you been playing that game? How many hours have you been clocking it? Uh, I haven't really kept tabs. Mm. It's been, it's been less than 24 hours, if that's what people are wondering. Oh, so it's just a few hours a night for a couple of weeks, so, okay. But it's all good, and it just gives me a little, uh, it just gives me a chance to unwind a little. It's, mm-hmm. There comes a point where you have to step away from Pony just for a little bit to get perspective and keep mm-hmm. your sanity. True that. And for people at home who are saying, Oh my god, Silver Girl's playing a game instead of editing the Pony Show. Oh, how could he? Very very easily. I turn on the PlayStation <laughs> and now you got to recharge your batteries with something else. Otherwise, it gets stagnant. Yeah, it's it's like eating the same thing every day. You get bored of it. So you just need to step away for a while and just relax. Exactly. And that's the long and the short of it. I'd recommend, if you're unsure about Destiny, watch a few online games. Watch some Let's Plays or even the cinematics and just decide for yourself before you try it out. Unfortunately, the days of rentals are... are Slowly dying. Yes, there's very little options in that. But YouTube does provide an option in at least seeing what how other people are playing. Yeah, via proxy. But honestly speaking, uh, Silver, when you say that you would recommend this game, and let's just say if little Billy wants to rent the game, can he? If there's a store nearby that still sells the ga- uh, rents the game, sure. So there's no kind of system where, okay, little Billy plays the game, but he can't, uh, what you would call this, is lock into his thing or not? It's just like a drop-in, drop-out kind of game? Uh, as far as I know, there is not, but I am not as well-versed. Before Destiny, I had not played a video game in almost a year. Oh, wow. And that might explain why I'm a little... Rusty? Rusty, or or why I'm just old. Me, you kids, enough with the ponage. But still, come on, there has to be a GameStop, right? GameStop is popular, or Gamefly, advertised on the hub. No, not but, the hub anymore, but Discovery. But they don't, I don't know, they don't have a rental service. Gamefly does, if I remember right. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, Gamefly is a rental service, and GameStop is also a rental service. There's no GameStop, really? No more? Or oh, there's still a GameStop, very much so. They don't do rentals? Nope, just really? buy, you buy, you can get used games, you can get a used version of this, but uh, there is no rental. Okay, that's new in my book because I thought they always had rentals. Well, maybe Redbox. Redbox has it, right? Yeah, I think for a while there I saw it, but Redbox stock changes very flippantly. Ah, okay. So this is showing that I am not from America. <laughs> Believe me, it's that we're about to enter an election year. You'll be glad. So you would recommend this game for people, and you... I would. I would recommend they look into it and make a decision based on what they see. But also just be aware, a lot of this, a lot of it takes off after the Taken King. Mm, all right. So a take, the Taken King DLC is required to have fun for this, right? I think that to, to get the full experience, to see what it's fully capable of, yes, do, do go with the, ta- the Taken King. There we go. It's kind of a discussion, roundtable talk review of Destiny, the Taken King, not really roundtable because this is speaking from Silver's point of view. And I do need to note that Silver's been playing with his friend, so that's why he's having more fun than normal people would. Oh, what do you mean, normal people? Well, the people. Show me a normal person. Uh, I'll show you a liar. (laughs) Uh, Quote unquote normal. Quote unquote normal. Yeah, the casual players. The casuals. But remember, you, we, we were all on a grand crusade to slay Bob. Oh, yeah, true. Curse ye, Bob. If you guys want to try it out, or oh, just eh, play it. I don't know. I mean, depends. Like, the most important part is to have a friend to suffer with. <laughs> oh, yes. it's Suffering's always funner in groups. Are you going to play with the listeners at home? <laughs> I don't know them. <laughs> I'm so... I don't, I'm sorry folks, but I, I don't know if I want to get inundated with requests from people I've never met. I was like, who are you? <laughs> I don't know you. Uh, who uh, are you people? 
Uh, right. Too bad, too bad. Because I'm sure a lot of people at home who are listening to this are really interested to play a, play a game with you. And probably you, you know, probably they will start a guild in, under your name. <laughs> well, that'd be, okay, that'd be crazy. I don't know if there are, I don't think there are guilds. In, There's no uh, guild? Really? I don't, I don't think so. Huh. Not that I'm aware. Well, probably, I don't know, if there is, probably someone will do it and say, Silver Senpai, here is your gill. Now add us to your friends. It's like, I don't know who you are and I'm not a senpai. I don't, I don't know how to send pie. <laughs> oh. Do you have to package it? Or, I mean, I'm assuming there's an expiration date. I don't know, probably. But still. Uh, so anyway, that's how we talk about Destiny. It's not as perfect as the video game podcast or some of the YouTubers who do that for a living. We, our specialty is more on ponies. But hey, this is, uh, like I said, proof of concept or experimental. If you guys enjoy listening to us babble about video games or whatnot, just let us know. Probably if we do this the third time, we'll talk about movies. There's still one that we promised that we still haven't done. Not Not yet, but we... We will. Mm-hmm. And plus, we've got to bring a certain someone back into the fold. Oh, yeah. True. But with that one, we'll talk about it later on. But anyway, is there anything you'd like to add on, Silver? I will slay Bob. That's all I really got. It is, uh, dre- it is Dreadnought. <laughs> then Angel Buddy comes in with a super mega Dreadnought and destroys the universe. Oh, God. And then we have to have Tengen Topa Green Lagan to finish it off. You know, an awesome fight. That's right. With the power of a big bang. Oh, yes. Uh, but anyway, so if you do like this, please put it in the comment below saying that you like this and you'd like us to babble about other things and ponies. If not, just say, stick to what you know. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Titan of Silver Quill, Slayer of Bob. And we'll guys see you next week with another, I would say, amazing, because amazing is redundant what I'm using. Let's say another fun pack episode of the MBS show. Take us out, Silver. Adios. Now I know how James feel when he is about to say something and then that song comes out. <laughs> yes, it's the ultimate joy. Yeah.